Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Friday. Today we have um, Ashley Hawks in the studio. I think you'll remember that you saw the way that Ashley um, hangs up her tubes, which is behind her. Um, we spent like, I don't know, a couple <laughs> months going over that cool method. Ashley, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's great to have you here. So uh, before we talk to Ashley Moore, we're going to watch um, some, I see a photo um, show. I know there's a, a special PowerPoint. Uh -huh. PowerPoint. <laughs> and then a, uh, a clip. So uh, kind of a twofer. So anytime you're ready, Ethel. Okay. I'm going to do a share screen. Yeah, Hey, so here at John's uh, live session, we really want everybody to connect. And so the next two slides um, will have Ashley's social handles, like Instagram. She's very active there. So her handle is Ashley Hawks Watercolor. She also has, or in Facebook, uh, you can do a search with uh, Ash Watercolor. And as always, we spotlight a couple of sample artworks of our guest artists. Uh, today, Ashley, we will start with this. If you could share a line or two about each of these art artworks, that would be lovely. Yes, of course. So this was my friend's dog. She asked me to paint him. Um, it was a challenge because black, I'd never done like a black animal before and to try to get the depth and pick the right color. Got a lot of Mayan dark blue and Payne's gray in here. Um, but yeah, that one, I was really pleased with how the, the dark turned out. Gotta love those Yoda ears too. <laughs> okay. um, this, this was just me trying to um, hone in on my eyes. Animal eyes are so much fun. And if you can get it right, it kind of comes alive really pleased with how that eye came out kind of looks at you but I do have some um I have some iridescent gold that I have if you can see around the face and some flecks of that iridescent gold and it turned out really cool lovely job thank you and this is my neighbor's cow took a picture and then uh my neighbors had brought me dinner when I was having surgery and so I painted their cow and gave it to them um, oh, and I had just gotten the transparent oxides, the, the trio, so brown, red, and yellow. I really wanted to play around with those, and they were so perfect for this rusty-looking red cow. A lot of transparent red oxide there. Um, this is another commission I was asked to do. This is a 41-year-old horse. He's still living. They still ride him. Um, and he was a lot of fun to paint. And I got to hand deliver him to my friend's daughter who actually burst out crying when she saw it. So that was a huge, huge return for me. It was worth every hour I spent painting him. This is our dog, Clover. She passed away in January. Um, it took me a couple months to feel ready to paint her. Um, she wasn't quite two yet, but um, I'm going to cry. Goodness. Um, in this photo, she was so happy. And so. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful tribute, Ashley. You can see the love in her eyes and the, the coloring is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. White, white animals have always kind of eluded me. And I'm really pleased with how this one came out. A lot of raw umber in the shadows and then paints gray. And it's a very rare uh, composition, very rare composition. Absolutely Thank splendid job. Thank you. Oh, and this is our dog. <clears throat> dog. This is my very first pet portrait. I followed a Skillshare um, tutorial for this one. And uh, this is our dog, Dougie. He was a Basset Hound pug mix, if you can imagine. He was the derpiest dog on the planet and he passed away in December 2020 and so he was my very first pet portrait lots of um I really love the greenish what is it called the greenish umber can't remember what it's called 
but uh, that's what's in the background of that greenish raw umber. Here's another commission I was asked to do. And this, the dog on the right, I got to meet her and she really has like a cracked out eye. She really looks like that. Um, so it's really funny to meet her and see like her crazy eye. Her family calls it the crazy eye. Um, but these are siblings, believe it or not. This one was so fun. I did this last summer. I had just had, I was about to have surgery and I just needed a uh, distraction from healing and pain and what whatnot. Um, this was a, a reference photo I found on Unsplash. I really loved the color of the boats and I wanted to try to get that color. So there's some transparent yellow oxide, more of that transparent red oxide for kind of the, the rusty colors. And this is my very first time doing a water reflection. And uh, I don't know, I think we look back at our pictures from the past and, and think, oh, I know what to do now to make it better. So it's really hard to look at this because I'm like, I want to go back and like, add more, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it now hangs in the entryway of our house. Hey, that's the last image on this slide. Hey. So um, we have the video, a short clip, like part of Ashley's process video on standby whenever you're ready to, sh to share. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to show the the image. So this is my daughter's service dog. Can you guys see? Oh, I'm just going to show it like this. I can show it like this. It's kind of horrible right there. So this is my daughter's service dog. Um, and she asked me to paint her for this demo. And so I gladly obliged. And so this, this process video that we're going to play is kind of me starting on the eyes, which I always start on the eyes, the nose, the mouth first. So that's what this is. And it's super sped up. If you guys have questions after, please throw them at me. Is it okay, Ashley? I will, you send us the two images yes. of a reference photo. So I think um, good before we, sh we play the video, we could share uh, Reba, Reba's. That's her name, right? Yeah, her name is Reba. Reba. Yep, like Reba, Reba McIntyre. This is Reba. Oh, pretty dark. <laughs> yep. So she walks next to my daughter's wheelchair <laughs> and stays right by her side. She's just an amazing dog. She's only eight months old. And would you like me to play? Uh, is this now that you want us to play the process video? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. There we go. So I have some masking fluid on the highlights of the eyes. Sorry, this is gonna go really fast, guys. Um, I always mask out the highlights. It's really important for me to get those right. And then I remove that, I go in with some different colors. Now I'm working on the nose. I like to start with darks often first and then kind of fade them out with some water. Um, noses are so much fun. And you'll see here in a second, I like to use salt on the nose. It really brings out the granulation and adds that really cool dog nose texture, the, the pebbly texture of a dog's um, snout. Isn't that what we said earlier? It's a snout. Um, for the tongue, I love Potter's Pink and Pimontite Genuine. They're just perfect for, for animal tongues. And then I went too dark on the nose. So you'll see me kind of adding some water and lifting. I do a lot of lifting um, to kind of bring highlights back if I go a little too dark, which is really cool that you can do that. Especially I'm working on Fabriano soft press paper and you can really achieve some good lifting on that paper. You haven't done very much and we already know exactly what it is. <laughs> I think that's driver. Wonderful. I feel like the, you know, they say the eyes are the window to the soul, right? I feel like if you can nail the eyes on a portrait, the rest can kind of just be loose. And that's usually what I focus on is getting those eyes right, getting that nose right. And then the rest we can, as you can see, I'm doing a lot of wet on wet, lots of paints gray, and I'm just dropping it in. And I'll even take water on my fingers and flick water on it. You'll see in a second to just kind of 
encourage granulation separation. Mm. Okay, so that's where we got last night when I painted this. So this is where we're at. Um, yeah, so. That Toshi's um, image ready on your. Yep, I've got it. Yep, so this is, this is kind of where I ended up. But what's interesting, I wanna show you guys, this is really important to me about eyes. You don't look at eyes like an eye, really. I mean, see if I can show this to you without glare. I'm gonna zoom in on these eyes. You can actually see my reflection right there. I was taking the picture. So I always make sure to just look for shapes. You can see we've got a really dark area here. Um, and even though I mask out the highlights, it's not white. I mean, I went back in with some, I think, royal blue. What is that called? King's royal blue. Um, and just very lightly because if if you look at eyes, there's not really always pure white in there. Okay. So that's how far we got on this one. I really wanted to show the process on that, but I have another one today. I know this is unprecedented to do two images in one um, live, but we've got, okay. So I wanna take you guys through my process. It starts before I ever put paint on paper. Um, it actually starts, I stretch my paper. I know that that question is gonna come up, so I might as well address it now. I do stretch my paper and I just use gummed paper tape. I love stretching paper. That's where you can find me on a Friday night in my studio, stretching like 10 pieces of paper because I love doing it. And I love the result. When I go to mat a um, pet portrait for a client and it's just perfectly flat, you have no issues, no buckles, no waves. Um, it's just something I like to do. Some people hate it. And that is totally cool. I have it mounted. Okay, guys, re reuse, repurpose, recycle. This is a puzzle board. Someone was throwing away some puzzle boards. I don't know what this is called. Do you guys know what this is called? Oops. Like MDF? Particle board? Particle it's like board. M it is like particle board, but it's like MDF and it has like a coating on it. And then I just paint it with some some paint to kind of seal it. And then um, I stretch my paper. So I always have tons of these laying around when I'm ready to paint. The next thing I do is I like to use Procreate. It's just, um, I bring my image into Procreate. Let me see, we have Reba, I'm gonna, this is the little guy I'm going to paint today. And I don't know if I'll be able to paint all of it today, but this just made me so happy. Doesn't that make you happy? Come on. <laughs> Adorable. This, this is this, why. That's this a image very cute be, picture. I, I didn't take it, but it is so cute. Oh my gosh. Do you want, I you want to really share the uh, image that you sent? The, the beautiful image yeah. of Toshi? Okay, here we go. That's yeah. Toshi. <laughs> yeah, and you guys can find this image on Unsplash for free um, if you want to try painting it later, whatever you want to do. But this is what my process. So the first thing I do is bring it into Procreate and I start picking my colors. Um, and I don't always make it exact. I actually edited this photo slightly to get the tones that I wanted. Um, but this is what I do. I just take the dropper tool and I go through and pick out my colors. So for this, I picked Indian yellow. Wow. And then, um, for this, I picked Payne's gray and I have a little bit of neutral tint. I like to throw those two together, um, for the inside of the eye, I've made a concoction and I always grab a cheap sketchbook and I plan it out. So I've got my choices for my eyes my nose, the hat, fur, and then I play around. This is just me playing around with some different ideas. And that way I know exactly what I wanna do before I ever start painting. Your swatch sketchbook makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, thank you, I love it. It's so nice to look back. Like 
every pet portrait I've done is in here. Like I can look back. So here's Clover, my dog that uh, I cried about. <laughs> here's me planning her out. We've got Potter's Pink. Potter's Pink has been huge for pet portraits. It's just, look at this granulation. It's just so perfect. Even, you know, dogs with pink noses, dogs with pink around their ears or, or what have you, tongues. That's a great color. I love also that you shared your eye color because I noticed the realism in your eyes that you use the lavender. That's very helpful. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of the highlights end up being a bluish tint. So I'll use lavender or the Royal King's Royal Blue. Those are fantastic, but I water them down significantly. All right. So I planned out my colors and I, I just use, all right, this is going to probably open a can of worms. I don't know, but this is my master palette. This is just a tin and this brings me so much joy. And got my stickers because I'm 12 years old. Uh, these are all my colors. So like the ones on the wall behind me, they're all here so that when I'm planning a portrait, I can sit down and I just spray this down and I can play. I don't have to get tubes out, squeeze it out, waste paint. I can just, you know, pick my colors from here. And then from there, I'll just squeeze them out onto my porcelain plate. This is just a cheap plate I got at World Market for like three bucks. So for this little cutie, I came up with for the eye. Let me see here. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. I came up with kind of a mixture and I don't, I don't normally use naphthamide maroon. But I decided to add burnt sienna and naphthamide maroon for those highlights in the eye. So I always start with my eyes and I always start with the dark. Well, I wouldn't say always. This is such a hard thing to do, you guys, because as creatives, like we don't always know what we're going to do or how it's going to turn out. And we just have to kind of start and then go with the flow. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. Please ask me questions. <laughs> I feel like I'm making you guys drink from the fire hose. So I apologize mm -hmm. if that's. No, you have answered all the questions already before asking that. Good deal. Good deal. Well, <laughs> no, I was just great, Ashley. You did great. Thinking. Thank you. It also <laughs> helps that you answer all those questions that are in our blog. Oh yeah, I did answer those questions. So I watch these so much. I've been watching for a year. So I already knew what questions people ask. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I came prepared with answers, whether or not you want them. Um, I generally use these silver black velvet brushes for my pet portraits. Um, just like every other artist, I've bought and tried like every brush that exists. And I just keep coming back to these. They're just... I don't know, tried and true. And then I've got, I usually use this size too. Sorry, I'm new to this guys, forgive me. Uh, that little tip's usually pretty good for doing my little details. Although I did pick this up at Hobby Lobby the other day. It is a 20 over zero, just a cheap brush, but it's got such a fine tip that it's nice to nice to have on hand. I also will have like a stiff brush on hand for lifting. I don't like to use these when I'm scrubbing because they're such a soft like mimic squirrel that I don't want to destroy them lifting. So I'll just use like a a synthetic for that. All right, I'm going to get these out of the way, but I wanted to keep them here so I didn't forget because I know that somebody might have questions. So the eyes, we, I always start on the eyes. And my biggest reason is if I were to go in and paint this whole thing and save the eyes for last, and it turns out horrible, like the eye turns out horrible. I've just wasted so much time. So if I can get those eyes, right. I feel like the rest of it kind of just comes together. It flows. 
So I've got my naphthenide maroon and my little, don't ask about that, but that's my burnt sienna. It fell out of the half pan, so I just use it this way. Ashley, one question that came yeah. over from Anne was, what sketchbook do you prefer for watercolor? Oh, that's a loaded question. So I am loving for my, I have a sketchbook pra practice that I keep. It's for me. You know what I mean? Like it's for me. It's not really something I share, but I'm loving those etcher um, perfect sketchbooks. They're kind of pricey, but like the paper is so delightful to paint on that it makes me paint more. Um, but Thank this you. for, yeah, for, um, this is a cheapo. This is an Arteza. I got it in a two pack. It's just, it's not the best quality, but for what I'm doing, I don't, I don't need to use fancy cotton paper for just swatching my colors and planning. Thank you I've also sure. been getting into making sketchbooks lately. I made one using the Fabriano soft press and I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'm going to start with the light, the light part of the eye here. And if you guys want to pull up the reference image so you can see what I'm doing too, that is great. So I'm going to go ahead and get it wet with just some clean water, partially clean water. And then I've got my colors here. I'm going to start just dropping it in. Eyes are so cool. Have you guys ever looked at an eye, like a horse eye up close? There's so many variations in color. So I like granulating colors for the eye, especially the colored part. And I've got this. Does anybody else make weird faces while they paint? <laughs> Not telling. <laughs> uh, Not really. I do. <laughs> I'm with you, Ashley. <laughs> and eyes are also my favorite part to paint. Oh, they're so fun. Once you they get the hang on. of it, oh, they're fun. <laughs> I feel like if your tongue's not out while you're painting, then you're doing it wrong, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm going to let that dry for just a second, but I'm looking at this eye and in the pupil I see that it's not all just a black circle I can see that it's got a shape you see all those shapes um I do have it masked masked off in that really light highlight right there and then I wanted to show you guys what I use so I use I use this it's just I don't know what brand this is fine line I guess that's the brand it has this fine tip which I've used from time to time, but if I really want to get it right, I just use this dip pen with like a sharp point on it. And I just open the lid, dip it in, and then I can really like right here on the eye, I was able to get it really fine. I could probably do it without the masking fluid, but uh, it's a little risky for me and I'd rather just have it protected for a minute and then I can feel safe to remove it once I've got all the other colors in. While I'm waiting for that to dry, the white part of the eye is fun too. And here's where the potter's pink comes in. Do you see that potter's pink right there? Yeah. So the white is never white. We've got, look, maybe some buff titanium. I don't know, some potters right. there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go what, and get that wet. What size is your iPad? <laughs> it's huge. Oh, I know. It's gargantuan. <laughs> that was my answer for a laptop. I needed a laptop and I got this instead. So it's 12.9. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I highly recommend it. All right, I've got my potter's pink here and I'm just gonna kind of get a little bit. The cool part about watercolor that I love is if I don't put enough on, I can go back. 
See that? He's got his little bloodshot eyes are coming to life. You know, they say every painting has an ugly phase. I think mine have like an existential crisis phase. <laughs> I always have this part of, of paintings where I'm like, mm -hmm. it's ruined. And then my husband will come in and be like, no, you can do it. So grateful for spouses who support our art. All right, Ashley, some of us are already loading our grocery carts with fine line resist pin. <laughs> and Sue shared that you can refill it with any masking fluid. Yes, I, I think I've refilled mine several times. It's awesome. Uh, it's nice to be able to mask off like cat whiskers. I'm not very good at cats. I've done a few, but eh, I just need more practice. Okay. Gonna use my dryer to speed this up. Okay, I've, I'm gonna go in on the pupil now with, I think I will do some neutral tint. I'm gonna go right in there. I don't hear, hear Ethel's rooster today. What's going on with that? <laughs> because it's midnight. Like it's. Oh my gosh. Uh, not really midnight. It's 2 a.m. already. <laughs> oh, mine crow at 2 a.m. That's not fair. But we saw a rooster at least through image today. Was it a rooster? No, it's a chicken, not a rooster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we also have ducks and turkeys, and earlier they were being really loud, and I thought, oh, we're going to have to compete with Ethel's rooster. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take some Payne's Gray, and I'm going to start lining that. That eyeball looks creepy right now. I'm going to start adding my dark. So, Ashley, this is the main subject you do mostly? The dogs? You know, I have been. And and mm -hmm. it's been such a journey. Um, mm -hmm. I started out just swatching all the time. My my husband made fun of me because he's like, Are you ever gonna paint something? I was like, Well, why why do I need to? If I'm enjoying myself swatching, why do I need mm -hmm. to paint something? Right. But um, I got serious, I'd say 2019, 2020. I just started taking online classes and got more serious about it. And then, um, right. yeah, so right now these are my commissions. So my art is so sacred to me. It's the practice is just something that has gotten me through a lot. And so I really protect my art practice. And I said, I would never sell my art and I would never do paintings for people, but, um, I've really enjoyed doing commissions. I mean, you saw my emotion talking about my dog that passed and being able to give that to other people has been just priceless um, and be able to make money doing what I love. So yeah, I do, I have been doing a lot of dog portraits, um, but, but I also have a sketchbook practice. I also paint art just for myself. The sunflower on the wall behind me, um, okay. that was for me. It was 100% for myself. I was having a kidney transplant in March and I knew the healing was going to be long and arduous. So I wanted to paint something I could hang in my room. This is my bedroom or is it my studio and I sleep in my studio? That's the question. But, uh, I Thank hung you. this up. Yeah. I hung that up on my wall while I was healing from surgery. And it really just, this winter was so long here in Idaho. I just thought it was never going to end. And that sunflower brought me so much joy. Great. I think you're going, you should stick to this 
particular subject. You're Thank good you. in this. Thank yep. you. I really enjoy it. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just taking some water and just blending that darkness out. And this dude is going to give me nightmares if I don't finish that because that eye is creepy. Okay. I'm going to start adding in some burnt umber. Too much water. Sometimes I'll mix some neutral tint with my burnt umber or some Payne's gray if I want to darken it up. I'll even use, I really like Van Dyke Brown uh, for pet portraits. That's one that I really use a lot of. But I'm not using that one today. Hi, this is Julie here. I love Hi. how that I just jumps off the page at you. Thank you. I love that part when I finish an eye and it's like, oh, it's alive. <laughs> it's magic. It's so fun. Would you like to keep the background white? Yeah, I actually have been doing that on all of them. I've done a couple with a background, but I just didn't love it. So I usually just keep it white. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. What exactly is neutral tint? I mean, why do you put it with other colors or are you supposed to? I mean, what, what is, it? Um, is it? Neutral tint is, is, is a, it's PBK6, so it's a black pigment with a violet and I think ultramarine. Is that correct, John? PB15, isn't it? Um, neutral tint's fantastic. Uh, you can use it instead of black. Um, mm -hmm. You can add it to other colors to kind of dull them down. Like I added it to this burnt umber and I got kind of like a deep, rich brown out of it. It's a fun mixing color. You have to play around with it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. I learned that from watching these Zooms every week. Are you self-taught or did you go to school? No, I've always been into art ever since I, my mom said I, I was painting and drawing ever since I could sit at the kitchen table. It's just been kind of part of me. And I did take a watercolor class in high school and I liked it, but my teacher would only let us paint Western art. Like he only liked cowboys and horses. And so if I painted flamingos, he would give me a C. And so it kind of like burned me out on it for a little while. Um, but I think in 2014, 2015, I started playing around again. And I, um, I'm a photographer, so I, I'm not practicing my business right now, but um, photography kind of took the place of painting for me for many years because it fulfilled that need to create while my children were small and, you know, paint and small children, not always a good mix. And so I kind of gave up on painting while they were little and now they're, uh, they're getting grown and I stopped doing my photography business in 2016 to kind of focus on, I had to homeschool my kids um, for different reasons. And that was really hard for me. And so I, I put the business aside and started painting really seriously around that time. But I, I highly recommend just YouTube and Skillshare and these Zooms just all, there's so many resources available for us to learn and grow as artists. It's fantastic. Ashley, do you um, draw freehand? Um, yes, I have been drawing freehand. This one, um, 
I like to trace with uh, graphite. Um, this one I did like a projection method. Um, so it just depends on what I'm painting. Mm -hmm. But Thank yeah, you. I, you're welcome. Thanks for the question. I think drawing is really important. And I think the drawing itself is really important. And I usually don't leave the lines this dark, but for the sake of the video, I left them kind of dark today. All right, so I'm gonna dry that and see if I'm losing my highlights. It happens. I just get going and I go too dark. So right here on the edge of the eye, I need a highlight. So I'm just going in with kind of, this is just a, a very stiff synthetic. It's just barely wet. And I'm going to go back in where I want that highlight back and just kind of finesse it. And then I got my paper towel or kitchen roll for my European friends. Who was the artist that was using a roll of toilet paper for their sponge? That was funny. Okay. As our friend Bob Ross likes to say, we get happy accidents. Mine are all, not always happy, but we get accidents and we just have to roll with it. I do have a brush that's made for this, but I can't for the life of me figure out how to use it. Uh, I think it's called an eradicator brush. It's just very like almost like boar bristle, but mm. I'm going to try it just for funsies. And it's very stiff, so you can kind of scrub at it. And this paper is fantastic. This is that Fabriano soft press kind of obsessed with it. I've used everything. I, I, uh, kind of a fun story, um, back in 2019, when I started getting serious about watercolor again. Um, my friend's grandma passed away and she was a watercolor artist. And my friend found out I was into watercolor and she said they had a, um, this is every artist's dream, by the way, they said, we've got like a shipping crate full of her art supplies, paper, paint, everything, furniture, books, and we don't know what to do with it. Do you want to come out and see it? And I was living in San Diego at the time I drove out to Hamul to the desert and I walked in that shipping crate and I started crying because it was full of 30 by 40 sheets of arches, like the 300 pound, just like all the cool paper and all the, it was amazing. My son said, mom, why are you crying? It's paper. And at the time I was using like the cheapest Canson XL, you know, and so that was like a dream come true. I got tons. I'm still working through that paper. And then all my Daniel Smith paints that I had at that time came from her stash. So there were like 50 Daniel Smith paints. And that's how I got started in Daniel Smith. So I like to think she's my art angel watching over me. A very art mother. <laughs> yes. And I didn't even know her, but... It was just so cool to be able to inherit all of that. And I hope I'm doing it justice. We have a question in the chat from Dina. She asked, how long do you soak your paper before stretching it? And Sue wants to know what part of Idaho you're in. Ah, so I don't soak my paper actually. I used to, but I found that I can really just take like a flat brush. I get a cup of distilled water and I just take this flat brush and I paint the water on one side. I let it sit for like a minute or two. 
flip it over, paint the water on the other side, let it sit. And then I just, honestly, the paper, this cotton paper just kind of soaks it in. And when it's completely flat and soggy, like a cloth, that's when I know I'm ready to, to go ahead and stretch it. And I will wipe the edges off clean. Like I'll take a paper towel and get rid of the excess water before I put down my gummed paper tape. So thank you. Good question. I really got to deepen these darks here in the middle. There's so many layers that go into these. Right. And how much time do you uh, take to complete a painting like in this size? I guess it's, it's like A4 size, isn't it? So this is a lot smaller than I usually paint. I just made it smaller for the demo. Um, uh -huh. I, usually, right. I usually do my dog portraits uh, yeah, I think if I think a four sounds about right. Um, I, I map my own paintings. I make my own mats. Right. Uh, and I always do 16 by 20. I don't know what that is in like centimeters, but that's 16 inches by 20 inches. Um, and how long it takes me just depends. I've had somewhere like the one I did of my white dog. I did that in three hours like start to finish, didn't even walk away from it. But then you get times where I have to walk away for a day or two and then come back at it. Cause I'll, I'll get to a point in the painting where I'm like, Oh, it's so bad. I ruined it. Or I don't know. What, or I just feel stumped and I don't know what to do. I just have to walk away. So I don't really know. I would say if I really sat down and did a painting start to finish without taking breaks, I'd probably say like anywhere from four to six hours Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. I always have to squint at the reference image to see what I'm doing, to see what we're looking at. I think that's helpful. I think I'm going to add some buff titanium to the white part. Just very lightly buff titanium. Bring my little pan over here. I try not to use a lot of buff titanium because it is more of an opaque color. But if I do it very lightly, it usually does the trick. You hear my rooster? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm glad I can laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> okay, so that was raw umber and I haven't used it yet, but it's on there for some reason. I should probably look back at my sketchbook, huh? That's Payne's gray, Potter's pink. Save that one. Okay. I'm going to do something else for a minute while I wait for that to dry. So you can kind of see how I do. Let's do the nose. Noses are so much fun. 
And I'm going to actually step up to a slightly larger brush for this, I think. So here we have a six. Noses are notoriously Payne's gray. I don't know what it is, but they always have like this bluish gray tint to them. So I'm going to pull my little reference here. You see that? We've even got like some blue tones here. Um, this is really fun. If you have an app where you can use an eyedropper tool, um, I find it helpful. Some people don't want to copy the picture perfectly, and that is totally cool. I know a pet portrait artist who takes a black dog and makes them totally colorful. Like this would be purple, and this would it would just it's fun. Um, I like to try to stay true to it. It's just something I actually enjoy. Um, I can look at a picture and be like, Payne's gray, buff titanium, Indian yellow. It's just a kind of a game I play, I guess. <clears throat> Here's in the darkest. It just looks black, right? But if you pull it up in the eyedropper, you can see we're on the spectrum of blue. And that's where my Payne's gray comes in. And I'm actually thinking of buying some Payne's blue gray. Um, but to remedy that, I'll add like Mayan dark blue to it to kind of cool it off if I need. Um, if I want a lot of granulation, I can add some ultramarine. But I think for today, I think we just need some Payne's Gray. So for noses, I always start with the dark parts. So we've got this cute little guy. He's so cute. Wish I could adopt him. Um, I have enough dogs but he's cute. So I'm going to take this and go all the way down. I don't want to leave it too long if I want to fade it out at all. Like if I need to soften it, I don't want to let it dry too much, but this line Let's see, I do need to fade out just a little right here. So this is just clean water. I'm just finessing it a little bit. This is one of my favorite techniques is to go in with your darks and then kind of fade out to the lights. Um, works really good for the what do you want to call it? Nostrils. I was going to say nose holes, but that doesn't sound right. I have to shout out to my daughter, my 12 year old. Um, she has watched these Zooms with me from day one. And I'm really sad Ian's not here today. Or if he is, he better speak up because my daughter loves Ian. I don't know what it is. She just, every time Ian starts talking, she yells, Ian. <laughs> it's the cutest thing. I don't see him on here today. Yeah, he hasn't been on in a couple mm -hmm. sessions. We worry about him over here. Oh, I didn't answer the question what part of Idaho I'm in. So we live north of Preston, Idaho. It's in southeast Idaho. Um, if you've seen the movie Napoleon Dynamite, that's Preston, Idaho. Um, I actually, we live in an old church that's been made into a house. It's super, uh, it's fun. It's interesting. My poor husband's a contractor and uh, he just, it's a lot of work because there's always something needing done and, but it's fun. I mean, who can say they live in an old church? Are you by Twin Falls, Ashley? Um, Twin Falls is about two hours away. Nice. So we're we're in what we call the we lovingly call the armpit of Idaho. We are in the southeast corner on the border of Utah. So I am from Utah. My husband's family all lives in Utah, just forty five minutes away. So we're not close enough that like people pop in unannounced. But we're close enough that like we can go to Sunday dinner with family or we can go hang out or they can come up and our home's kind of just a refuge. We're literally like in the middle of nowhere and it's just a safe haven. 
it's been, we actually bought this house during COVID and it was just such a blessing to be away from it all. Cause we had just moved back from San Diego and I was so glad we weren't down there during the nonsense, the pandemic. I'm going to look on your Instagram to try and find pictures. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. I, I think so. I did create an Instagram for the house. It's called the old country church. I think that's what it's called, but I haven't updated it in ages. Honestly, we could have our own YouTube channel with all the updates that we've got. We have, I mean, we have a gym right now. It's like storage. Ashley, how much time it takes to complete uh, your work? Of this um, yeah, anywhere from, like I said, three to six hours. I don't really know. If I sit down and I just buckle down and do it, turn on some good murder mysteries on YouTube, I can really pump it out. Um, but if I get stumped, I have to walk away for a couple of days. I really, okay. you know, you get to a point in a painting where you just don't know what to do with it. That's true. We call that the crisis, the ugly phase. Usually for me, it's a crisis. Hmm. What have I done? But yeah, I and do you do you do one painting at a time or do you do multiple paintings uh, so that they will get dry and you work on the other end? Yeah, uh, that's such a good question. Yes, I definitely do. I have multiple that I that I have around that I will set aside while I work on another because I do like to let it dry naturally. I really try not to use my heat tool if I don't have to. Yeah. I just love the granulation that you get when you just let it dry or if I'm adding salt, uh, you cannot use a heat tool. If you've got salt on it, it won't give you the effect that you want. Because I usually use myself uh, half Imperial sheets and uh, I usually do two or three minimum two, three painting at a time. So that one gets dry. I could go for the second coat on the other while the first coat on the other painting is getting dry. Yeah, that's so smart. Yeah, because I try to save time and um, maybe I will not be doing any painting for a week and maybe in two days I might be finishing three or four paintings. It depends on my mood. <laughs> Isn't that so true? Okay, I'm going to add some salt. Just when I get those little, well, that was an accident, but there's the salt. So I just use sea salt. It's kind of, it's not super coarse, but I like to add in some coarse coarser grains and you have to do this when it's like a certain wetness or it won't show up like this part might be too dry but the reason I do this is because I love this pebbly texture on the nose and I'm trying to achieve that as naturally as possible without having to go in with my brush and like I try not to do that if if I don't have to. So I usually have to do two layers on the nose, put on the salt, let it dry. And um, I made a mess. So I'm just going to get rid of that. <laughs> but man, once you get the eyes and the nose, you're golden. Like I really can, I love to paint loose. I really do. But for these animals, I love to make sure that the eyes and the nose are accurate so that they look realistic. And then I can kind of flow. And I'm going to go ahead on this one. And this is just a plastic palette knife. This is how I remove my masking fluid. I know there's a tool for this, but I just use what I have. I try not to buy too much stuff. I got to save my money to buy more of those Daniel Smith paints, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that I've removed the masking fluid, there is work to be done because the masking fluid is always a little bigger than I want it to be. It leaves like a bigger section. So you can see I need to darken here. And then I'm going to add some blue 
I'm going to go in with some of that King's Royal Blue I was talking about. That's one of the newer colors um, that Daniel Smith came out with that I have been enjoying. And it is another one that has some opacity to it. Um, but as long as I go in really light, actually, I think that's what that is right there. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to take my raw umber now. Um, and I'm going to go in here, kind of. All right, now I've got my blue. And this is super detailed. I uh, This is about as detailed as I get is on the eye and the nose and then everything else just gets to flow. And then here, this one, I'm noticing on my reference image, sorry, I got some. So I'm noticing on my reference image that the white part of the eye, the highlight is a lot lighter than what I've got here. So if I absolutely have to, I can try to lift it. And if I can't, I'll go in with some titanium white from time to time, or I use gouache. If I, if I screw up royally and I mess up my highlights, I will go in with a little gouache, but it doesn't happen super often. This is my little this is actually this isn't daniel smith so we're going to pretend it is have you ever done some miniature painting what's that have you ever done some miniature painting miniature no yeah. that i i think i have before but i enjoy painting like the bigger i paint the happier i am i feel like um mm -hmm. i really really enjoy painting big and and lots of water like the sunflower behind me was the most joyful thing I've ever painted I mean I just had so much fun just going crazy on a big sheet of paper that was Thank a fun you. one to stretch Ethel can you share her other view so we can see the sunflower mm, sure Thank it's you. Fine. so it's this and sometimes I'm like oh this looks like a giant meatball so northern meatball, <laughs> but I love, let me tip my screen. So I love the, the petals up here. I just went crazy. I was just throwing yellow. I can't remember if this was uh, Hansa Yellow Deep. I've got quin quinacridone gold in there. And I just, that was so joyful. I had so much fun doing that. Thank you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. How are we You've shared so much about your painting process and also um, so many wonderful stories. Thank you so much, Ashley. Yeah, you're welcome. Are we about out of time? You're very close. Okay. Well, I am going to finish this little fella and I'll post him on my socials when he's done. Nice work. Wonderful. I like that nose. Oh, thank you. <laughs> At so, what time do you remove the salt from the nose? I wait till it's completely dry and I'll go back in with this tool and just scrape it off and I'll take my blower and get rid of it. There's salt Thanks. all over the floor in here. The yep. sweet dog has a salty nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a salty little guy. I'm actually really excited to paint the beanie. I just love yellow. So I'm like, I've got my Indian yellow and I'm just excited to get in there with that. That'll be fun. But after I'm done doing the, the middle of the eye, I'll go in with my dark, dark, dark. And I'll go ahead and line the eye because that's when it pops. And John, you just tell me when you're sick of me and I'll, I'll stop. Well, never gonna get sick of you, but. Oh, shucks. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to do a whole painting today for sure, but I really feel like 
man, if I could teach people to do eyes and noses, it goes a long way. Cause then you can just have fun with the fur. It's so yeah, that's the most important thing. It's not necessarily getting something done, but just giving um, input and suggestions and eyes are just you do wonderful, beautiful eyes. Thank you. I gotta do this little fella justice because he is cute. Oh, and really quick, I'm supposed to show my daughter requested that since I painted her dog or showed her dog, she wants me to show her actual dog. Are you guys okay with that? Do you want to see my daughter's dog? She's right here. <laughs> Well, here she is. <laughs> She's like, why you want to be She's, She's the best. She's the best service dog on the planet. We love her. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, somebody called in one day and I thought it was Ian, but it's a chap who's in San Diego. So he must come from the same sort of northeast of England that Ian comes from. Oh, yeah. I heard that accent. Uh, where is he from? Northeast England. Yeah. I'm from the south. Okay. Yeah, we love Ian around here, man. He's like a celebrity. My family has been so supportive of my art. I'm really grateful for that. Because it does take away from them at times. But then in another way, it doesn't. Because this is my mental health. It's like I said, I had a kidney transplant this year. Wow. And this is what got me through because I could paint from my bed. Trust me, I was watching those zooms from the hospital. I wasn't about to turn my camera on though because it looked like death. But, but this is what's gotten me through my healing. It was very arduous healing process, but art is so important to me. And I'm just really glad to get to share it. So I just want to show real quick, the reason I'm going around that section is because I'm going to add some raw umber here. And then I have my, uh, what was it? Burnt sienna mixture there. So, so I can actually go in with this and add it here. And I'll usually do both eyes at the same time because I can just go back and forth while one dries. And then here with the burnt umber, warm it up a little. Let's see. There's so many positive comments in the chat, Ashley. I just wanted to read a couple to you if that's okay. Oh, awesome. I would love it. Okay, so Belle says, great demo on, the, demo on the eyes shows intense emotion. Thank you. Joy shared, so glad your surgery went well and you're healed. Um, Why Bonilla said you're inspiring. Mm -hmm. Sue shared that 15 years ago, her dog passed away. Oh, I'm sorry, her 15-year-old dog passed away two uh, weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that she's looking forward to the day that she can paint her sneaky peek. So you have inspired. Oh, yay. With your thank positive you. attitude and all the tips you shared. Thank you again. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry about your sneaky Pete. That's like the best name ever, by the way. There's so much more to art than all this technical stuff, I feel like. And for me, it's just, I, uh, you know, I tend to have a lot of anxiety. And so when I'm in the zone, when I'm painting, I just, it goes away. I forget about it. And it's not necessarily the outcome that I love. It's the process. And that's why I have a sketchbook process that I have. In fact, yesterday <clears throat> I had to drop my daughter off at girls camp in the mountains. And I just stopped by a stream and I sat down on some rocks and I painted and like the world just kind of, I'd say the world fades away, but it almost like comes closer into view because you're focusing on the beauty around you. And so 
you know, it's such a gift. All right, Ashley, if you could actually uh, post it so we can see the finished uh, finished painting. Yeah, you got it. The, the beautiful yeah. yellow beret on your head. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be neat. Okay, I will. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it was wonderful. And could thank you, you for watching, spending time as well. Yeah. Could you post just the two eyes and the nose and mouth? Absolutely. As, before you go and do all the rest of it, because that's so expressive. And it would be fun to see that. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will post it. Thank you. Ashley, you were wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. And hearing your story really is amazing. Thank you so much. It's, it's been really nice to be able to share my art and my story. Ashley, Ash you've been, you've inspired me to paint my old dog, Mikey. Oh, I hope you do. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Ashley, thank you. Ashley, I loved it. And I find it interesting when you mention anxiety, because I always look at my dog who lives in the moment. And you mention when you're painting, your anxiety goes away and you're painting a dog that's living in the moment and you're in the moment. Absolutely. Animals are incredible. They are. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. See you Goodbye. next week. Bye. 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 Bye.